Welcome to Spitfire Mods. Today we're going to be covering lower heater modifications or lower heater setup. Uh, we're going to be talking about lower heaters on rework stations and what their application or part is in the, uh, in the profiling process as well as how to set them up, configure them so that they're, you're getting the most out of them. At Spitfire Mods, um, one thing you're going to notice is uh, our profiles are, are designed and um, they're designed around a machine uh, configuration that is what we call flatlined. In other words, we take any rework station out there, whether it has an IR bottom, a ceramic plate bottom, uh, a hot air bottom, whatever bottom heater section it has, as well as upper heater or third zone lower heating system where it has convection upper and lower heaters. No matter what it is, we're going to we're going to want to flatline that system to make it fit the profiling mold so that it's compatible with all other systems. In other words, our profiles are all around creating a a perfect three-phase profile covering your preheat, your soak and your flux and your uh, your rework zone so that you have a, a proper preheat which is for board uh, heating up your board so you can avoid thermal shock to the board a proper soak so that your flux activates properly and is most effective and then a proper reflow now as you can see this machine this machine has a has a lower uh, heater probe that originally is mounted right here it basically stubs out of this socket right here this little uh, mounting frame and sticks out over the board um, about an inch out uh, this one is modified, but originally it basically just sticks out over the over the plates. And what you'll find out with foreign-made machines is that their lower probes are always tight against the plate, meaning they're just down down near the plate. Um, and what you'll see is if you have your board up here and your plate down below and your sensor down on the plates, if you set this, the plates to be at 180 degrees Celsius, your board will not be 180 degrees Celsius. And that's what we want to eliminate. The, the discrepancy from what your probe's reading and what your board is, because your lower heater is is for preheating your board and bringing your board up to temperature. If it's not bringing it up to the proper temperature or it's bringing it up to a temperature other than what it reads out, it makes it difficult to use, difficult to manage, difficult to understand, and becomes an uh, uh, ineffective lower heater. So today what we want to cover is the different lower heater types. And it really doesn't matter what lower heater type you have because, again, we're basing this on a flat, flat, uh, flat line model. And our flat line model um, is like this. What it, what it accounts for is if your board is on your rack and your probe is within a quarter inch of under the board, meaning the board's plane is here and your probe is just there, about a quarter inch below, it's, it's not able to contact the board but yet it's not far away from the board. It's in very close proximity. Now when we say a quarter inch we mean a quarter inch. It, it's not, you don't want to bring it closer to the board and you don't want to bring it further away. You want to bring it in that quarter inch. And it could be an eighth inch. It could be, you know, uh, three eighths. It could be somewhere around a quarter inch, but we want it to be as close to a quarter inch as possible. Everything in, in profiling is accuracy and, and repetition. So the reason it's a quarter inch is because if you keep it at a quarter inch on all the preheaters, Typically, they're a reflective type heat. Their heat isn't going in an upward direction on your lower heaters. And having it at that point gives you the most accurate reading. Having it down at the plate is very inaccurate. Having it off to the side is very inaccurate. Um, what you're working with when you have your board on your preheater, you're going to have outside air coming across the preheater. There might be a draft in the room. But at all times, your outside air is mixing with your plate temperature underneath the board. So you have your board here and your outside air is always cross flowing under there and mixing with that and what you have is a buffer zone. And you're going to find this on all our different stages as well. On our upper heater, our lower heater, all our different heaters have a heat source and then they have a buffer zone which is the area around it and then they have external room temperature. A lot of people say, hey, if my room temperature is cold, my room temperature is high, if it's winter, if it's summer, do I need to adjust my preheater? to offset for that. Now, to some degree, that's slightly true, but um, if you flatline your machine, that shouldn't be true. So, when you're flatlining the machine, what you're trying to do is eliminate all those variances. So, by keeping your board here and your, and your probe close to the board, what do you get? And that's what we want to talk about today. What you get is, you get an accurate reading. And the reason 
you get the accurate reading is this. If your board's here, your probe's somewhere towards the middle of the heating source, it, just by looking at it, you can see your probe is somewhat isolated. Like if your board, if your board is sitting on here, you can see your probe is very well tucked under there. It's very well covered. And if your board's here, your probe is extremely well covered in that in that heat zone and away from the buffer zone, away from the external air. If your probe can be inside that heat zone, what it's going to give you is an extremely accurate reading, an ex a, a good reading, and it's going to be able to con control the heat much better because you got to remember that this probe runs these plates. If this probe thinks these plates need to create more heat, it tells them to turn on and get hotter. If it thinks they need to be cooler, it tells them to be cooler. If your probe's off here to the side, it's not going to really get a temperature of your board and therefore it's going to inaccurately control your plates. So you have to think of it as though this probe really is what controls your board's temperature. And it does. It tells the plates how hot they need to be to make this board a temperature. Now, the first question you might think, <clears throat> you might think of some other things like, hey, what if I just take my probe and I tape it to the board? Or what if I take my probe and I, and I touch the board? Or I, I apply it against the bottom of the board? Or put it on the top of the board? A lot of machines, they'll, they'll have them, like the AOYUE883, they want to put it on the top of the machine. You know, this unit happens to be a Scotto HR6000. It's pretty much the same layout as the IR6000, except it uses a hot air instead of an IR. But it's pretty pretty same thing as about an 8 to 9 inch square bottom heater. And you might think, hey, what if I touch my probe onto a subject? And that's one thing we're going to cover is what don't you do? You don't touch your probes onto the subject unless you're just monitoring the subject. <clears throat> and the reason is, this probe drives these plates. When you put a board on here, your board's room temperature. Your plates obviously can go a lot hotter than room temperature. By touching the probe on your board, you're telling your plates that the heat zone is room temperature. Even after the plates are heating up, it's still telling it, hey, it's still room temperature because your board's not going to not going to respond. When you turn on these plates, your board doesn't jump up in temperature. It doesn't all of a sudden it doesn't and it doesn't follow the plates. It follows, but it doesn't track with the plates, it tracks behind them. So when your plates are up to 100 degrees, your board is at 60. When your plates are up to 200 degrees, your board is still back there at 160. So if you're touching your board, your plates will get up to 200 and they'll just keep going. They're going to keep going and they're going to keep going until about 260. And what that's going to do is that's going to burn the heck out of your board. So we don't touch the subject because we're driving the plates from that probe. And if you touch the subject, you're always going to get an inaccurate and lower reading. Inaccurate and lower readings make the plates go hotter and, and a higher temperature. So an inaccurate lower reading is definitely not something you want your probe to be telling your machine to do because it, when your machine's at 200 you want to tell it hey you're at 160 because it's going to go up 40 degrees and that's going to create a dangerous zone for your board. Anything over 200 we consider to be dangerous. Not dangerous in that you can't do it, dangerous in the fact that at 200, when you start going past 200 for an unleaded board, you start entering what's called the maximum uh, temperature for the components on that board around 220, 230, even 240, the, board, the components can start to deteriorate and internally come apart and that's going to cause damage to your board. So we want to make sure that our plates don't repeatedly exceed 200 degrees and if they do, they don't do it by a lot or for a long period of time. And that's another good question there is what's what is the maximum that my you know if I put my board on there and I run my preheater to 240 is that going to damage my board if I run it to 260 is that going to damage my board the thing to remember about maximum temperature is it's not just the temperature that they can withstand if your board can withstand 230 degrees it doesn't mean that um, it can't withstand 260 it doesn't mean that it can't withstand 300 it does it what it means is that your board is rated for 240 degrees meaning that's that te at that temperature, it could start deteriorating. Now, again, you have a follow pattern. Your board, when your board's at 200 degrees, your plates probably will be all the way up at 240, and that's the difference in distance from your plates to your board and mixing with the ambient air. When your air is coming in, your plate zone mixes with that outside air, and there's a there's a buffer in between there that that adjusts that. That's again why you want to stay within close proximity of your board because you get a much more accurate reading in that buffer. So the question was, um, what can my board withstand? A board can withstand almost any amount of heat that, the, that this machine can put out, but it can only withstand dangerous temperatures for certain periods of time, and that's 
a ratio of the longer, the lower the temperature. So if you hit your board with 300 degree Celsius hot air, um, you might say, hey, it, my, I can't do that because my board would be damaged. That's not true. What your board is going to do is go, go into a ramping period. So th if you hit a 200 degree board with 300 degree air, it's going to ramp and it's going to shoot up towards 300 degrees, but it's not going to it's not going to probably go all the way to 300 because your hot air dissipates over distance, but it's going to shoot in that direction, and that's where time comes in. The longer you hold it at 300, the more damage it can get. So, uh, how, I guess how does this actually apply to the board? The the, re the way this applies is that when you take your board all the way up to a certain temperature, say say you bring your board up to 220 to melt the solder and to liquefy your your solder under your GPU. The question is. Uh, do I do that to 200 and then I set my plates and everything to 200 and, and then I leave it there until it gets there? The, the answer would be no. You need to set your plates in all higher, but you need to take them into that da into that dangerous zone for a short period of time so that when your board does catch up and get into that zone, it doesn't stay there too long. So yes, you can apply 260 degrees to your board. You could do it for you know 30, 40 seconds, but any longer than that, now you're running into the the damaging thing. So can my board take hotter than the maximum rating? It can, but time is what dictates how long that can be. And you can experiment with that and you know run some clean uh, boards that are maybe scrap boards and find out how much actually kills the board. It's probably going to be, you know, if it was 260, it'd probably be about 60 seconds to 120 seconds, depending on what you know nozzle or what uh, component you were using to heat up the board. Anyway. So back to lower lower boards. Your lower board area needs to be accurate. It needs to run at the right temperature. Ideally, your if your board is here and your probe's a quarter inch below, setting your preheater system to 180 should make your board 180. And what you'll find that when you have your board there and a quarter inch below it is your probe and it's in the it's within that heating zone, typically setting that probe to 180 being just below the board will will actually make your board pretty much hit that temperature. So one quarter inch below the board is is what's required on all machines. <clears throat> now you might say this machine, which is an HR6000, or if it was an eight, a Hanton 390 or a 490, would have had a probe mounted right against the plates. And most foreign machines would. So you might say, well, uh, why do they do that, or what does what does that do? And you'll see that a lot of their profiles require you to preheat at 160 with the probe right on the plate. What you can find out is that doesn't do much of anything, and uh, the big thing is it's it's just wrong. It's not you know it's not adequate. It doesn't preheat the board sufficiently, and it will damage your board. So what you want to do is you want to modify that. So any probe that is tight against the plates, you need to get rid of that and make it more usable. And again, we speak strictly on large size BGA boards. So we're not talking about cell phones. We're not talking about small boards. You may have other applications, uh, video cards. You may have small boards that don't fit this mold. So at Spitfire Mods, we we focus and specialize strictly in large size boards. Anything about eight, nine inches or bigger. So when we talk, we're talking about large size boards. We're not we're not giving. Uh, this may not apply to a small board. Should you do a small board, if you had a small board on here uh, that barely covered this heat zone, you may actually not want your probe up against the board. You may actually want it off somewhere else. I personally would probably put it up against the board, but you may be able to get away with having it in a different area. Now, <clears throat> so um, we covered types of heaters. Um, now we're going to cover specifically modding it. The first thing you want to do with your, if your probe is, is down here, like your probe is sticking out just, just here, um, what you want to do is move that and you want to elevate it up under the board. So the, the best way to do it is to extend that probe up so you're going to want to de detach it from there, make, uh, look in the bottom of your unit, open your bottom cover, and find out where it's secured. Make sure you loosen it up so you get enough slack, and then pull it up here. Stretch it out to a nice length where it's out in the middle of the board, and then um, it'll be very flimsy. It'll just basically be laying there, so you want to reinforce it. The best thing to reinforce it with, it, with is rigid uh, copper wiring. Um, this piece of copper wiring is wrapped around the probe and then secured to the nut um, that it was originally attached to. So what we're, we're doing is we're taking the probe out and then we're replacing the probe with a with a secure um, piece, uh, something to secure it with, and then we're putting we're putting that in and then we're using that and we're just winding it around our probe. So now we have a flexible probe. I can pro you know stick that probe up. I can stick the probe down. I can move it where I need it, which is a nice little L pattern so that it's coming up to the board. 
and then when I put my board on there, it's in the right spot. And um, if you need schematics or more details on opening your machine and getting in there and doing that, we can uh, supply that. We actually have that for the IR6000s and the other um, units that you'll find uh, you do want to modify. So this pretty much is, is all we're covering today on our lower heater modification or um, setup video. So what, what we wanted to cover was the fact that you want to get your board within the zone. Um, your zone is your, your footprint of your, of your heater and the more in the middle of that and then the center of that is where you want to be. So that's all we're going to cover here. This video is a set of a series so you're going to have other videos on what to do after this video and before this video. Um, so thank you for watching and uh, that's the end of this video. Thanks.